Hi, this is Alex Webster from Cannibal Corpse. We're here today at, at the ABC in Glasgow, Scotland. Yeah, the tour's been great so far. We are just at the, you know, the final show of the tour here in Glasgow today, but we've been out for a month with Devil Driver co-headlining. You know, sometimes they've been playing last and sometimes we're playing last, but it's a co-headlining tour with Devil Driver. The Black Dolly Murder and Hour of Penance are also on the tour, and they're, you know, excellent bands. We've been getting along great with all three of the other bands and just having a great time. There's been lots of people coming to the shows, so it's really been a near-perfect tour. Just everything's gone so great. The only problems we've had are mechanical problems with our bus a few times. Other than that, you know, the shows and the camaraderie amongst the band and crew, the bands and crew, it's been perfect. Actually, the, the show in Nottingham just two days ago was one of my favorites. We've had a number of really great shows on this tour. Really, most of them have been great. You know, there's very few shows where we've been walking off stage thinking, oh, that could have been better or whatever. Most of them, it's just really been one great show after the other, you know, with really great audiences. And, but, um, yeah, Nottingham, we just had a really excellent show that night. And then after the show, we went to the oldest pub in England that, um, or the oldest inn in England, the old trip to Jerusalem, it's at beneath Nottingham Castle. And then we went to another bar, the Salutation, and we went down into the, the caves beneath there. There's a cave system underneath Nottingham. They're going from some of the buildings and it would go back to the castle. So we got to see that. So that, that was really interesting, you know. We don't have any, any kind of history like that in the United States, so being able to see some things that are oh, more than twice as old as our country, some things even maybe three times as old as the United States. It's really interesting to us. So, yeah, the Nottingham Day really stands out for me on this tour. Wow, there's, we got great fans all over the place, but um, some of the shows that we've done, like in, um, oh, there's a few cities that really stand out where we always just have an amazing show, like Moscow, We've had such great shows there. We've had really great shows um, just all over the place. I mean, it's hard to single out a very favorite, but like um, Santiago in Chile and um, Buenos Aires, Argentina, Mexico City, Mexico. It's one of the best. We we recently just played over in um, in Asia for the first first time outside of um, Korea and Japan. You know, we played a few other places and we had a lot of fun playing in China and Indonesia. Um, Oh gosh, we have fun wherever we play. I can't pick a favorite. Wouldn't be fair, and, and really, there's just great shows everywhere. Um, the shows in Latin America are pretty hard to beat, though. Like, yeah, play in Mexico, Chile, Argentina, Venezuela, Colombia. You know, we've had Brazil. We've had so many great shows there. Um, and the crowd is just so energetic. But, um, yeah, we've had some great shows throughout the world. Hard to pick a favorite. challenging. There's been some times where you have a bad night, like one night we had a show closed early in Colombia due to police intervention and I also had the stomach flu at the same time. So that wasn't a very good night, as you might imagine. But um, that's just one day and then within a couple days you forget about those things and you have other good shows and you know everything's fine. Um, as far as a period of time when things were challenging, I think when we, when we kicked Chris Barnes out and replaced him with George Corpse Grinder Fisher, that was um, fairly challenging because, you know, so many people really did like Chris's vocals and that sort of thing, and we needed to um, work really hard and fast to get new lyrics written. We kicked him out in the middle of a recording session for the album Vial, um, and um, he had already done some vocals, so we had to get rid of those vocals, rewrite lyrics, and do we had to do all of this and still really stay on schedule with the album release so that our record label wouldn't get upset with us for, you know, basically screwing up the schedule they had laid out for us. So that was very challenging. It's a big challenge to, um, to make a change like that, you know, and to have to take on new responsibilities. And in our, my case and in our drummer's case, we became the principal lyric writers um, after Chris was out. And, um, you know, it takes time to learn how to do that. And we had to learn in a hurry. Everything has to be perfect. 
You know, especially um, in this day and age, people are really accustomed to hearing albums that sound perfect because with digital editing, you can, it's very easy to fix a mistake once you make it. You say, oh, well, I made a mistake. Let's go back. We'll fix that one little section. Well, because it's so easy to fix these mistakes, a lot of people just fix every tiny little thing. And then you start fixing things that aren't really mistakes, but you convince yourself they're a mistake. You know, like, oh, well, my fingers hit just a little bit wrong on that one note. Let's go fix that. And you start listening to the songs again and again. And you'll hear, if you listen to metal albums from the 80s, they are a little bit less precise and a little bit more natural sounding. And as the time went by and, you know, editing technology improved with the advent of, you know, digital recording, you know, the um, things just got tighter and tighter. And you can really hear a difference if you listen to an album from a band that was around in the 80s and then listen to one of their albums now, the newer album is almost certainly going to be a tighter performance. With that, with that comes a lot more um, work in a way. I mean, you're, of course, you're given the opportunity to fix things, but then you end up spending that much more time looking for things that you can fix. You know, so everybody starts to really give themselves gray hair trying to make the album just perfect. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's something where um, at some point you just have to say, okay, it's good enough. Let's move on. <laughs> and that's not always easy because most musicians are perfectionists. Are you a perfectionist? Yeah, yeah, we, we are in this band. You know, we everybody really, it'll keep me awake at night thinking about one little mistake. Yeah, so I'm one of those guys. <laughs> You tour a lot. Um, when you're not on tour and uh, not recording an album, what do you do um, usually? I spend time with my wife and our dogs. You know, we, we don't have kids, but we have some dogs and we just hang out really and do things together. My wife and I like to travel if we have time. We try to go on a, some sort of a nice traveling vacation once a year, maybe even more if we have the time and the money. But, um, in my personal time where it's just me, I'll go ride my bike too. Like my wife's busy doing something else, I'll just ride my bicycle. Um, we like to go canoeing together and anything outdoors. We spend a lot of time indoors when we're on tour, you know, just in buildings like this, you know, and um, inside of a bus. So when, I'm, when, we get, when we get back home to Florida, it's nice to get into the outdoors and just go for, through a ride through the woods on my bike and, you know, breathe in all that fresh air. It feels good. So. Um, yeah, physical activity, being outdoors. And I love to also just create music when I'm home too. I know that's part of my job, so to speak, but it's also just something I like to do a lot. So I might go for a bike ride in the morning for a couple hours and then um, come home and start writing some music. We have some difficulty. We, we used to have problems in South Korea. We um, we were banned temporarily there. That ban's been lifted, to my knowledge, to the best of my knowledge. And um, Australia, same thing. New Zealand, same thing. I think there were bans on certain releases. I'm pretty sure most of those have been lifted. And we're able to play all three of those countries, so there's no problem and no sort of a live performance ban whatsoever there. I can attest to that. But um, as far as Germany's concerned, it's a little trickier. We don't fully understand the laws there. Um, even it seems like the people at our record label who help us take care of these things, they're never 100% sure of how to handle things. We, we officially have a couple records that are out and out banned. I believe Butcher to Birth, our second record, is completely banned. But then the two newest ones, for some reason, Torture and Evisceration Plague, have also been put on a list of albums that can't be sold to people under 18, I believe. And again, the details of this become so complicated that I'm not really sure if I should even speak about it too much because I might misspeak. I, I don't know what's banned and what isn't. You know, um, we, we show up, we ask our people at our label, what can we play this time? What t-shirts can we sell? And they tell us and it seems to be a little different each time we go there. So I don't completely understand. Yeah, um, for our 25th anniversary, which is this year, um, we got together in December of 1988 as Cannibal Corpse, and we've been together since then. And now it's 2013, so yeah, in December it'll be officially 25 years, but throughout, throughout 2013 we're celebrating the 25th anniversary. And we've, we're releasing a box set 
Um, the complete box set is in the United States, and that's going to have all 12 albums and a bunch of different things. And we're re releasing a slightly um, altered version of the box set with a, quite a bit less stuff, actually, because of the censorship problems in Germany. So the European version is actually altered because of our German problems. Germany's a big enough market, and um, there's enough other problems that could happen. Like, for example, if somebody bought a um, box set from Amazon in, in France and had it sent to Germany, and it was if, if someone bought one of the albums that's not available in Germany from some other country, it could actually get some people in trouble because it's banned in Germany. You know, so there's all these laws. We, we want to comply with laws of the countries that we um, work with. You know, so the the box set had to be tailored accordingly for Western Europe to um, because of Germany, because of the censorship problems there. But in the, in the U.S. and Canada and probably throughout the rest of the world, the other box set will be available. And that one has um, all 12 albums or as CDs, then a picture disc of a live CD that we just did over the past two tours, the Revisoration Plague Tour and the Torture Tour. Um, what else does it have? I'm trying to think here. Calendar, um, pictures, large pictures of each of the album artworks. They're all done by Vincent Locke, who's been our artist since the beginning. Awesome artist too. Vince is the best, and um, so it, it's going to be a really cool thing. And I believe, at least in the, in the USA, the version that's got 12 albums plus the 13th, the bonus CD and, and picture disc, that's all just for like a hundred dollars. The whole box set, so it's pretty good because it's less than um, it's probably around eight dollars per CD or something like that. So that would be. A, decent deal anyway, but then to get all that other stuff in there, the calendar, the calendar's nice because it's got, um, since we had 12 albums, it made sense to have it be 12 months, you know, 12 studio, um, 12 studio albums, one for each month this year, so we have the album cover for each of our studio albums each month, you know, first album for January, second album February, and so on. March 22nd, 1989, in Buffalo, New York, at the River Rock Cafe. And we'd only been a band for a few months, having gotten together in December of 88. And um, so it was our first show, you know, and we were lucky because it was opening for Dark Angel, who are, you know, thrash legends from Los Angeles area. And we were very big fans of them, a really good, dark sounding, very high speed thrash band that was pretty big inspiration for Campbell Corpse, really. They were one of the bands we listened to a lot. So being able to open for them on our first show um, was great. And we played with a couple other local bands, um, Attack and Baphomet. So it was us three Buffalo bands opening for Dark Angel at the River Rock Cafe. We were the first band of the night, but our first show we were playing in front of over 400 people. I believe there was like 450 people at the River Rock Cafe that night. The place was packed. We had a really great response, sold a bunch of demos that night. And, the ball got rolling right after that, and it's never really slowed down. Um, we were all accustomed to playing live at that point. We had been in other bands, so we weren't nervous or anything like that on stage. You know, it was the biggest show any of us had ever done, because normally we were just doing local shows that were never bigger than maybe 100, 150 people. Um, so it was a really big show, but we were just excited and super happy to be opening for some of our heroes, you know, Dark Angel. Yeah, it went well and things really got rolling from there. Being able to open for a big band like that introduced us to a lot of people throughout the Buffalo area and then we started getting a lot more people at our local shows. It was, it was great. First of all, apologies for not getting there this time. I don't know why we're not playing Ireland on this tour, but we love to play there. We have played there several times and we always have a lot of fun. You know, it's a great place to play and we have a blast. I think the last time we were there was maybe 2010. Um, so it's been it's been a long time and we'd like to get back there. Um, I don't know why we didn't get there for torture. It just didn't work out that to, it just didn't didn't happen this time. But for the next album we'll make a real effort to come back to Ireland because we love to play there. We have a lot of fun. You know, we've made some good friends there over the years. So we'll see you guys as soon as we can. Until then, stay brutal. <laughs>